You know you've been cooking too long when you start dancing by yourself in the kitchen. Hey guys, it's Maddie from Let's Eat Plants, and today we are doing a what I eat in a day, but not just any what I eat in a day, a very special what I eat in a day. Today I am swapping diets with my friend Nikita from Plants Not Plastic, and I am making four of her recipes today. So really, it's kind of like what Nikita usually eats in a day, and I am just going to try all of her meals and some of her favorites. We both thought it would be a very fun way to branch out of our normal eating routines and try something a little bit different. So my friend Nikita also has a YouTube channel as well as an Instagram and a blog. It's called Plants Not Plastic and she shares lots of recipes that are easy to make, budget-friendly, no oil, and of course whole food plant-based. Plus she shares some really great tips on how to reduce waste which I have found very helpful. So I will be linking all of her information in the description box down below. Definitely go check it out if you're interested in those kinds of recipes and I am very excited to start. We are going to start breakfast today with a potato hash and in her video she gives lots of tips and tricks on how to make crispy potatoes that are still oil-free either in the oven or in the air fryer. I'm going to be doing mine in the oven because I don't have an air fryer. So I'm very excited to see how those crispy potatoes turn out. And then we are also going to mix them with some other vegetables in the skillet to make a whole potato breakfast hash meal. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. I am so excited to try this right now. It smells amazing. Let's go ahead and try these potatoes. So, so good. I mean, I love a good potato breakfast recipe. So this is like totally up my alley for a savory breakfast. I really like the way she did her crispy potatoes. It's similar to actually how I do my oil-free tofu, which I've done on potatoes as well. That same like outer coating, I use tapioca starch, but I mean, flour is a much cheaper option and it seems to work really well. So I definitely love that hack for these potatoes. And I think they turned out really well. I also do really love the addition of maple syrup at the end. Like I never would have thought of that on my own, but it turned out really well. It's like, it's not too sweet. It doesn't taste like you've mixed maple syrup in there. It's just a very slight hint of sweetness and it just kind of boosts the overall flavor, I feel. Not to mention this was like super easy to make. You can cook the potatoes at the same time as you're cooking the rest of the veggies in the skillet. So the whole recipe came together in like 25 minutes which is perfect for like a weekend breakfast. The potatoes did get a little bit soft once I mixed them into the skillet. So the only thing is next time I might keep them separate and just do like a more veggie full skillet, <laughs> like add in some spinach and some mushrooms and some other veggies in there. But other than that, this is like perfect. I love it. Like I said, super easy to make, super budget friendly using flour, or she said you could even do oat flour for the coating. So breakfast has been delicious. I will definitely be making those potatoes again, and I'm gonna get some work done, and then I will see you guys back here for lunch. Okay, it is lunchtime. I'm going to be making some split pea soup today for lunch. Now in Nikita's recipe, she uses green split peas, but I only have yellow split peas. I think that they're the same, right? 
I hope so because that's all I have. But I'm very excited because this recipe uses the Instant Pot. You guys know I love my Instant Pot. Anything that I can cook in there and do like a hands-free version of, I'm all over that. If you don't have an Instant Pot, Nikita also gives a stovetop version of this recipe on her video for it. So definitely go check that out if you wanna make this soup. So I'm excited to start this recipe. Let's make some slippy soup. Okay, our lunchtime split pea soup is ready. I am so excited to try this right now. My split peas got very obliterated in the Instant Pot. Nikita did mention that in her recipe video that when cooking the split pea soup in the Instant Pot, it's a little bit more difficult to retain some of the split pea texture. So cooking on the stove top can help with that and or adjusting the cook times a little bit. So I think next time I might cook it for a little bit less time. Or you can just add in like some other beans on top of this because what essentially the split peas are doing is just thickening it. And it's not a bad way to get a thickened texture. I mean, the carrots and celery all retained their shape. So I do still have some chunkiness in here, which is good. Mmm, I haven't had split pea soup in a long time, so this is very nice and comforting. It is like a very, very good amount of flavor. The only ingredient that I was missing for my soup was thyme, so I do wish that I had had the thyme. <laughs> have the time. <laughs> but other than that, the flavor is really good. I am definitely a fan of this soup. I love split pea. Nikita's recipe is really good. I'm pretty satisfied right now. Okay, it is dinner time. I hope you guys don't mind the post shower hair and makeup list look. <laughs> Do you guys shower in the evenings or the mornings? Let me know in the comments below. Usually I shower in the evenings and then I cook dinner after that. So that's why we got this going on. But anyway, I am very excited for dinner. Nikita has suggested for me to make her Alfredo sauce. And as you guys know, I also have an Alfredo sauce on my channel. So we're doing a little Alfredo sauce swap. But her Alfredo sauce is made with potatoes. It's a potato Alfredo, which is such a cute name, potato Alfredo. So we're gonna go ahead and start by peeling and chopping the potatoes and then boiling everything and then we're gonna add it all to the blender. Oh, I'm also going to make some pasta as well. I'm just gonna use the chickpea pasta spirals that I get from Costco. Those are a really good gluten-free alternative to pasta or of course you could use brown rice pasta or whole wheat pasta or regular pasta, whatever kind of pasta you use. So let's go ahead and start by peeling and chopping the potatoes. Okay, I am so excited to try this potato Alfredo sauce. Ooh, that is creamy and thick. I like it. 
Ooh, the flavor is really nice. I really like the lemon in here. Now, usually when I use potato and things like cheese sauces, I find that the potato gets a little bit too starchy and it's just a very unusual consistency and texture. It's not really one of my favorites to use for cheese sauces, but actually this Alfredo sauce doesn't taste like that at all. It's one of the nicest consistencies and textures I've had for a potato based sauce. And the thickness and the creaminess is like, Unreal. It is such a beautiful texture. Me personally, I would have liked a little bit more nutritional yeast. So I think that I personally would add that next time, but you should always do a taste as you go anyway, and just adjust the seasonings as you're making the sauce to see if there's anything else you think it needs. Another thing that I would have liked to have added, which is totally my fault, is some broccoli. I think that this would be really nice with a few broccoli florets thrown in there to add a little greenery. I think that would be really good in here. And then you got like a whole, complete meal. You got beans, you got potatoes, you got greens. You're good to go. So I'm going to go finish my dinner now and then we are going to make some dessert because what is life without dessert? Am I right? So Nikita has actually chosen a dessert recipe for me to make that is a chocolate oatmeal cookie that looks very easy and straightforward. I believe it's only four ingredients. So I love something that is that simple, especially at the end of a long day of cooking because sometimes you just need a little sweetness after a long day. Let's test out these chocolate oat cookies. They smell really delicious. I mean, the whole kitchen just smells like delicious chocolateness right now. Very chewy and oaty, but decent amount of chocolate and sweetness. I would say for a healthy cookie, they are pretty good. I also love the fact that they were like very, very easy to make. And I was able to make a very small batch to have just a little sweet snack after dinner. I'm not sure if mine were a little bit more crumbly because I used quick cooking oats instead of rolled oats. In Nikita's original recipe, she does use rolled oats. So maybe if you follow that original recipe, you'll get a little bit better result than me. It's maybe not my favorite of the four recipes today, but I can definitely see how other people would like this. I do also remember seeing that in Nikita's blog post, she mentions you don't have to use the sugar. You could use something like bananas or dates. So if you wanted to keep it even healthier, there's also an option for that. It's oil free. It's only four ingredients. And for all of those reasons, I really like it. So I had so much fun today cooking all of Nikita's recipes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. If you want to see the video where Nikita makes all of my recipes, definitely go to her channel. It's called Plants Not Plastic. Of course, I'm going to link everything in the description box down below. There's a lot of amazing whole food plant-based recipes on her channel. And of course, she also has an Instagram and a blog where she posts all of her written recipes. So definitely go check her out. Go show her some love on her videos. And if you enjoy what I eat in a day video content, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. It's late. I'm going to go to bed. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.